Hey golf fans, this is Early1981 and welcome back to the channel. So today, as promised, we are going to have a Q&A with the legendary golf designer that is Arctic Fury. We are using his latest course, which is Umbria Golf Club Italy, for the backdrop to this video. I did reach out to the whole community on different uh, social media platforms and I have came up with the best 19 questions that I believe have been submitted. So let's have a look at the course conditions. Fairways are firm, greens are firm, green speed's medium fast, everything else is set to default. We're going to be playing off the gold tees which are playing 7,327 yards. And as always, for the camera flyby purposes, pin set number one. Now obviously, the man himself does not um, possess a PS4. He is a PC designer. So I felt it was just best for me to submit the questions to him, give him all the time in the world to get back to me. And that is exactly what we've done. So I will read out the questions. I'll name the people who the questions were submitted from. And uh, I'll relay Arctic Fury's um, answers. But thank you to everyone who continues to support the channel, guys. Um, hopefully we are going to see some uh, PGA 2K21 footage on the channel very shortly. Certainly looking forward to playing the game. And hopefully you guys are looking forward to seeing footage of the game live here on the channel. But I really appreciate everyone who continues to support the channel with views, comments, likes. So, hole number one, par four, playing 488 yards, stroke index six. So the first question comes from Alan Eastwood. And Alan says, how does he stay within the plant meter? Is there extra design editor options for the PC? And Arctic responded, I think it's just being very resourceful with everything. I don't multi-plant at all. That kills the planting meter. Everything is hand planted in place for a reason. So it looks like there's a lot more going on than there actually is. My last two courses, Carinthia and Umbria, only used about 85 to 90% of the planting meter. So wow, great question there from Alan Eastwood and what a response from Arctic Fury. It's hard to believe that Carinthia um, only used about 85 to 90 percent of the planting meter. I've not had the luxury of uh, completing this course yet but decent tee shot is going to get us down to the center of the fairway. 169 yards down eight feet. There is a back slope there we can use if we are along that. Six mile per hour wind should hold us up slightly. Ball at our feet combined with the wind should take us around to the left. But thank you to everyone who participated in uh, submitting questions, guys. I think we, I, I was submitted about 27 questions, if I do recall, over um, lots of different social media outlets. But I do hope that you guys are happy with the questions that I did submit. Obviously there was five, six, seven questions that um, were very similar. But great approach out there. That's going to leave us with a 13 foot putt. Three inches down. Green speeds are 163. This is going to turn fairly quickly to the right the last couple of feet. Just like that. Despite a poor putt line. And we do manage to pick up an opening birdie. So great start to this round, Umbria Golf Club Italy. So question number two is from Cathal O'Sullivan, who is a, a very talented designer in his own right. And he asks, the majority of designers can do all the basics pretty well, but Adam takes it to a whole other level. Honestly, I would go on holidays to the places he creates, and then he goes and builds an amazing course around it. Where does his ideas come from is my question. And Arctic responded with, I think my design style is based on my upbringing. Living in a small fishing village of 100 people, I did not have access to a golf course as it was an hour's drive away. Plus green fees were expensive. I ended up building my own golf holes around the village and I think that translates into my designs today. Plus, I was always obsessed with drawing golf holes and imagine creating beautiful worlds to play in. So wow, just an absolute unbelievable reply there from Arctic. But question number three comes from Michael Ross. 
what is the most agonizing taxing part of building a course? The necessary evils. An Arctic responds by saying, the hardest part for me is creating the first hole. Getting the lighting, weather, textures, color schemes down. Also getting drop zones to work properly is very difficult. Um, I can certainly back that up um, as a player. Some of the drop zones I've uh, witnessed uh, in some courses. Not that I'm in the water or out of bounds a lot, but some of them are just unbelievable. And he goes on to say also hand planting hundreds of thousands of blades of grass can be exhausting too. So that is a very good question from Michael. And a great response from Arctic Fury, as you would expect. But we are on hole number three here. Long par four, playing 502 yards. Tee shot has left us with 100, and, let's say 173 yards into the flag. Once again, a little bit of a backdrop that we can use. Backstop if we are long. That six mile per hour wind should help us out yardage wise. Should also move us to the right. Ball at our feet is going to move fairly aggressively to the left as soon as it leaves the club face. It's an absolute laser beam. Is the wind going to bring it back? Ryan, no. Wind didn't bring it back as much as I hoped it would. That slope at our feet really moved the ball a lot more to the left. We have found the backstop though, but that is going to be a downhill putt, I would imagine. Probably about 15 feet, 11 feet. To be honest, not the toughest of uh, green grids so far. This one's just gently going to turn to the right. Should hold its line. Does hold its line. And what a start to this round, guys. We are three under through the first three holes. As we move on to hole number four. The next question was submitted by Cody. He is also a designer who's uh, course featured on the channel previously. And he asks uh, Arctic Fury, what's his top three tips for new designers and what is his favorite theme to use? And Arctic says, I think if you're a new designer, you need to just get the basics down with the designer tools. I know Crazy Canuck 1985 has done tutorials for beginners. After that, develop your own style and create the course that makes you happy. Avoid negative, non-constructive comments from other designers and keep improving. I don't really have a favorite theme. However, I never really liked desert themes. Just find them dead and depressing. Also, never created a course in the harvest theme or the trees are not good at all. So, wow, great insight there into Arctic's um, mindset, his thought process. And some good tips as well for guys who are even advanced designers and for guys who are just starting out in the, the design and tool looking to make their first masterpiece. So great question so far guys if we're just trying to float this iron into the green. Should turn with the, the contours of the green. Didn't expect it to be that long actually. It's going to be another downhill putt, probably about 10 feet out, 14 feet out. Estimates are way off today. Probably the toughest putt we have had on any of the greens yet. It's going to turn hard right, last few feet out. Don't think I've allowed enough there. No. Also, a poor putt line did push that putt line to the right. And we are going to pick up our first par of the round. So question number five is from a Scotsman, Celtic Wolf. Also a, a talented designer in his own right. And he asks Arctic, is there one part of any of his courses that he is more proud of than the others? The one that he felt he nailed perfectly or just came about as a flash of inspiration? And Arctic replies to that by saying, I think my planting and environments are most my unique aspect of designing. However, in order for me to be fully proud of a course, it must be immersive, fun, and play great at the same time, offering lots of strategy options, risk-reward shots, etc. Well, Arctic, as a, a huge fan of your courses, and uh, I've played every single one, I can certainly um, back you up by saying I do strongly believe that everyone 
your courses I have played are extremely fun and uh, very immersive. So, first of the par fives here in hole number five. I mean, just look at this here, guys. Look at this rock work. It's just above the green. It's 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 just exceptional. I'm not getting a full chance to uh, admire this, but look at that as we zoom into it. Fantastic little cliff face with a rock pool below it. This is going to be an aggressive shot. We should just about bounce on from the top of that ridge. Should just about have enough club here. Two would be too long. Decent strike. There we go. Huge kick on the green. That actually may kick us off. Is it? I would prefer it went off the green. No, that is going to leave us a horrible putt from about 60, 70 feet here. 44 feet. What is wrong with my guesstimations with the yardage today, guys? Wow. Just need to get this to hit that slope there where it's yellow and red. I don't see how we're going to get this near the pin. This slopes all the way down to the, the front fringe. It's caught the slope. Should start to slowly work its way down and kind of turn back. And as confirmed, we are going to have a backwards putt from the fringe. Not the most challenging of putts here, but this one's for a birdie. 12 feet out, should just turn slightly left. I'll tell you what, I really fizzed that into the heart of the cup. But we do fortunately pick up birdie number four as we move on to hole number six. And question number six is from Roddy Rascal. And this is a bit of a weird question, but I'm sure you will understand it. Arctic um, understood the question also, but... Is Arctic okay to work as a contractor if he has supplied the framework and layout of a course invented in my head, would he create it? Obviously the course has to make sense at a first read and it may have playability issues. But if the idea is good, can he be hired to create it? So my question is, can he be a translator of ideas to bits using the course creator. In building terms, he is architect and builder. Can he work with ideas with people who have zero talent with implementation? So I think he's kind of asking, can I ask Arctic Fury to design a course for me? Basically, that's the way I read that question. I think there's we've maybe lost a, a bit in translation there. But Arctic... Um, has replied by saying, I think I understand the question here, but for me personally, I can only draw inspiration from my own ideas. I find it hard to take someone else's vision and get the motivation to bring it to life. It would feel like a job for me, and I do this for fun, and definitely don't want to feel like I'm working because I do enough of that already. I hope that makes sense. So, like I say there, I think that was, is Arctic Fury available for me to say, can you design me a course and I'll pay you via PayPal? So it sounds like he's not. He, he does this for the love of the game, which is unbelievable to hear. Question number seven is from William Hotel. Is there any inspiration for Arctic to create an RCR? Now, an RCR, guys, is a real course recreation. So maybe if you asked him, would he be interested in designing a replica of St. Andrews. And Arctic says, I can never see myself doing an RCR. I'm more of an original course designer, not a recreator. There's plenty of experts out there in the RCR department that do incredible jobs. For me, real life golf course architecture doesn't always translate well into a video game due to the obvious mechanics of the game. I make video game courses. That means putting exaggerated elements of strategy and risk reward in the courses to make it more enjoyable as a video game. You would not see a lot of this stuff in real life. But video games need to be fun and I like to go with that route. I could not agree more. And like I said a good few holes ago, I think every course the Arctic Fury um, has put out there that I've played 
always has the fun element. But really enjoying this course so far, guys. This is up there with one of the best courses from Arctic Fury, in my opinion, that I have played so far. But question number eight comes from Goonies485. How much research do you put into the landscape architectural designs of your courses based in other countries? Now, I think most of Arctic Fury's um, courses come from all over the world. But Arctic replies, I don't do a whole lot of research at all. I just have a vision in my head of how it looks to me and I go for it. It doesn't always make for a perfect representation, but it's my unique take on the idea. I have watched a few videos of unique golf courses in Europe that were not made by famous designers and I loved their unique design elements. So wow, it really is great to get these um, questions to Arctic and just let us know what's going on in his thought process and his brain. I mean, this is absolutely brilliant guys, really push that tee shot but we do get a very fortunate bounce there and kick on to the left hand side of the fairway. Going to imagine we've got a flop shot left here, so 40 yards out, I think we could come down to the gap wedge and just fully attack this flag stick. Slope at our feet is going to take us to the left. Wind's really died down here, by the way, to, to next to nothing. Three mile per hour wind. Greens are firm and fast, but it should kick upwards on this uphill slope and sit down just like that. Fantastic flop shot there. And we are going to be rewarded with birdie number six. So let's put it on to hole number nine and this comes from Frank JF USA. Frank is a YouTuber and he asks what are your designing plans for the future? Great question to ask as we are on the, the last hole of the front nine. But Arctic replies by saying my design plans for the future are based on how the new game turns out. I would say I have reached about 40% of my potential so far. Jeez, that is scary to think that the man has only reached 40% of his gaming design and potential so far. If I ever had complete control over custom objects, textures and vegetation, then I humbly admit I could do far more than what you have seen so far. The only thing holding me back is the designer itself. Wow. I think, I've got a feeling that Arctic Fury is going to really enjoy the, the new design and options that the, the guys have on PGA Tour 2K21 and hopefully we are going to see uh, an increase if that's possible on the quality of his courses. So short par 5 here after that tee shot I think we can reach with a 6 iron just looking to use the contours of the green and that falls front here to our advantage. Ball once again is going to slope to the left. So almost fully de-loft in this 8 iron. Setting it out to the right of the green. The wind and the slope should bring it back. Great swing. And this should kick right with the slope hopefully. Maybe a, uh, just a little bit long there. I was looking for that to land 3 or 4 yards shorter on the green. Looking for the kick. But we are going to have a chip shot from 8 yards out. It's going to almost fully loft this up. Should land a good few feet short of the flag. And see if we can get it tracking towards the cup. Turn. Turn. Oh, it stopped stone dead. Great execution. And with that, we are going to pick up birdie number seven. But what a course this is so far, guys. Really, really enjoying it. Obviously, I'm not getting the time to show some of the course detail. But the main object for this video is to get into the mind of Arctic Fury. So Scotty is going to kick us off on the back nine and he asks Arctic, what would you like to see added improved in the course designer on PGA Tour 2K21? What a fantastic question. And Arctic says, most of these would be my wish list. I would like to see universal trees for all themes. Might just have that mate. Or a lot more trees, bushes and plants added to each of these themes. Some themes are hard to use because the trees are not the best and he's got in brackets harvest. Harvest trees do look awful on the current game. New global plants and rocks would be nice. Obviously some new themes would be nice too. 
better backgrounds with the option of an ocean background on each theme. Options to lay down more than one heavy rough texture at a time to do more patterns on the grass. Ability to add certain sounds um, depending on the location of the course, like a cycles, like a circle sound texture of a bird chirping placed over a tee box. We had this feature in the Jack Nicholas series, and he also adds the ability to rotate objects 360 degrees. So great um, wish list from Arctic there. I'm sure we will see some of these things on PGA Tour 2K21. And we are just 10 yards out with that approach out there. Just coming up a little bit short. So just try to chip this as close to the hole as possible and see if we can walk away with par. Did put a slow on that one. That is going to leave us with a tap in par from about three feet out. Two feet. And we are going to remain at seven under par. So let's move on to hole number 11. And this question comes from Giles James. Why don't you start a YouTube tutorial channel on course designing? And Arctic has responded by saying, I might consider it in the future. I would definitely hit the subscribe button, Arctic. But at this point, I'm not really passionate about it. I don't have a lot of spare time and I enjoy using it on designing, but you never know. So at the moment, he doesn't really have the time to incorporate his designing with uh, doing a tutorial YouTube channel. But fortunately for us, the little spare time he does have, he is investing uh, into creating these masterpiece courses for, for you and me to play. So a tough tee shot here. Just going to deal off this. See if we can hold the left hand side of this fairway. Nice. Is it going to kick through the tree? It should do. Just about kicks through the branches. And we are going to be left with an uphill lie here. Should comfortably reach this in two. 18 feet up, as we predicted, slope at our feet. So just deal off in this five high, but it should just about kick at the front of the green, really in between clubs here. Two iron would be too long. Looking for a firm, aggressive bounce. Swinging well. Not sure if it's going to make it up this false front. Nope. But good layup there, just trickles back onto the, the green fringe. And it is going to leave us with another chip shot. We've had about four or five chip shots this round. But there is many a false front in some of these holes. Well designed course. Get in. Oh, we almost chip in for the eagle there. And that is going to leave us another tap in for birdie. And with this, we do move to eight under par. So, hole number 12 is going to be a par three. But this question comes from Goggles Walter. I do hope I pronounced everyone's name properly so far, guys. Apologies if not. But it's another great question, and he asks Arctic Fury, do you use keyboard and mouse or a controller when you're designing? Now, Arctic, as I mentioned before, designs on the PC. And Arctic has responded by saying, I use a wired Xbox One controller. That way I can lean back in the computer chair and relax while designing. I find controller way easier to use for designing than mouse and keyboard. So wow, great insight there guys. He likes to, to lean back in his chair, be relaxed and comfortable, as you all should be when you're designing. But I've really hit that well, looking to find this slope. Is it going to come down towards the pin like the, the green suggested? No, just a bit too much club there. Didn't find the slope we intended. And that is going to leave us a 26 foot putt. Greens are starting to get more aggressive with the brakes on this back nine. This one's really going to swing hard left uphill. The green speeds are 163. Very deliberate speed Arctic Fury puts on his, his greens. That one's came up short. Decent line, but it should ensure a tap in par. 
So we do manage to walk away with the par there and with that we are going to remain at minus 8. So let's move on to hole number 13 and question number 13 comes from Golf Weekly. Absolute fantastic couple of guys there guys really support my channel well I can't thank them enough but they have asked out of all the courses you have designed, what one is your favourite and why? Wow, this is going to be interesting because he must have so many favourite courses. And he's replied with a long, hmm, I don't really have a favourite overall. Maybe Carinthia Club Austria because of the tons of risk reward shots. I think Italy, eh, Umbria Italy is up there too. I like the way it's righted and strategy of the course. Now, I'm going to say my most favorite arctic fury course so far and i know we've only played um 12 holes of this one but mine is carinthia austria for the the exact reason the arctic um said it's got heaps of risk reward shots and um for me that is what golf gaming on the console is all about or pc gaming golf I love risk reward courses. I want to be punished if I don't execute my shot well. But at the same time, if I do pull off that shot, I want to be rewarded. So just looking to bump this on from the green should kick over to the right. Just like that. Is it going to check up? Now, it's fantastic we talk about risk reward because that is a risk reward shot there. We took the aggressive um, approach shot, used the contours off the green, and it's left us with a a five foot downhill putt which we just convert and we move to nine under par so hole number 14 this is going to be a par three playing 168 yards look at this guys look at the beauty of this hole but question number 14 is from fellow youtuber nor 47 and he is asked are you and chris the same person. Now, Chris, guys, is a very talented up-and-coming designer. Um, in my opinion, I could be wrong. He has been inspired by um, Arctic Fury, going by some of the course designs that he's put out there. And Arctic has replied, lol, no, we are not the same person. But um, Chris is one of these designers. If you've not yet played his courses, go and check them out. We have featured... A few of his courses on the channel. Um, he's another designer whose work I am really looking forward to playing. Um, progressing on to PGA Tour 2K21. But 7 iron here. Slight downhill elevation. Ah, I've put a slow on it. And with that, that is going to go long and right of the target here. May get a kick left off this bank. Might trickle back down a little bit. Does put us back on the green, is it? No, look at the contours of that green. We were on the green, then we slope back off it. And it's going to be another chip shot. We are getting plenty of practice on our short game this round with the chips. So just deal off in this a little bit. And we are going to attack this. Sorry, I said deal off. I meant loft it. Get in. Oh, it's the second chip shot that agonizingly just misses out due to the contours right next to the cup. But we do pick up the birdie so let's move on to hole 15 long par 5 stroke index 17 and this question comes from l cut geez oh i think l cut's been with my channel for such a long time always comment and i think i recall comments from l cut on the golf club so thank you very much for your your long service and uh sticking it out with the channel but l cut asks can you recall your very first course design on a computer game and how good or bad was it why what a question and arctic has responded it was in the 90s i was a teenager so that's maybe given a little bit away about arctic's age here and on christmas day my mother had put a golf a computer golf game in my stocking no idea how she found it lol it was jack nicholas golf and i discovered it had a course designer in it my first course was actually pretty amazing. In some aspects, it had more details than my current courses. Good times. Jack Nicholas Golf is a game I never ever got round to playing, guys, because I've never had a PC. 
but that's the second time that Arctic has mentioned that in this Q&A. So that must be a game that's uh, close to his heart. So let's see if we can reach this green in two with his two wood. Just short shaping this one. Ball's going to move hard right at our feet. And we're counteracting that slope. With a touch of draw here, should get a huge kick left off this slope here. And it should filter down towards the green if we played this well. This should now come back down towards the pin. Going by the layout. Tracking well. We get down to the bottom plateau. Bottom, bottom tier. And that's going to leave us with an 18 foot putt for Eagle. We've been close on a couple of occasions for Eagle in this course. This putt's just going to slowly drift to the left. Need that to start turning. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, just burn the right edge. Wow. Just miss out on an eagle in that hole. Would have loved for that to drop. But we do pick up the second best prize, which is a birdie. And we move to 10 under par with three holes to play. So, hole number 16, hardest hole on the course coming in at stroke index 1. This question is from JJ11. Have HP Studios asked you to design a have HP Studios asked you to design a course for PJ Tour 2K21? And Arctic has replied by saying, I have not been asked to make any courses for the new game. I don't have any information about the new game. So basically, that's a big no. I mean, I'm amazed. I mean, I would like to think that if I was high up at HP Studios. Now don't get me wrong. HP Studios have got great designers that are obviously employed by them. But if it was me, and it was my business, I would be approaching Arctic Fury and asking them to come and work for me. Because I feel, with the tools that you're seeing that the designers had access to for the PGA Tour 2K21, the world's the oyster for this man. And he's got such a passion about design and it's great because I've got such a passion about playing this game which I hope filters through in all my videos and it's great to see that this guy designs purely for the passion of the game and the enjoyment he's not really interested in designing courses for people which there is designers out there that do that they charge for 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 people um, like say I wanted St Andrews made someone out there um, there, well, there are designers out there who are available for a fee to go and design that course for me. And that's each to their own. I'm not going to judge that. But decent approach shot there, guys. As you can see, it's so tough to get near this pin. But we are left with a downhill putt. This is a tricky putt. Would love to birdie the hardest hole in the course. Going to have to take her time in this putt. Needs to turn. It is turning. And what a fantastic birdie that is. Delighted to pick up a birdie on the hardest hole on the course. And we move to 11 under. So question number 17 comes from Big Dode. Is there one particular designer whose course designs have caught your attention? Great question. And Arctic has responded by saying, I don't actually play the game very much. I just like to focus my spare time on designing. I don't follow the design community much either, so it's hard for me to say. I'm sure there are always new amazing designers putting out awesome courses all the time, though. Fantastic question there. But that doesn't surprise me that the man just purely focuses on his own work. Um, some, some people might think that's a bit ignorant, but I, I think that's... Um, down to the man's professionalism. He clearly doesn't have time to, to follow other course designs that are going out there. And he's one of that designers, he won't have to worry, oh, has someone put this course out before? Do you know what I mean? He doesn't do RCRs, and as we all know, his courses are so very unique that there's very little people out there who would even get close to, to recreating one of the courses that um, Arctic is working on. Is that going to turn? Is it going to turn? Oh, catches the left lip and we do pick up another birdie as we move on to the final hole. Now, I've got two questions to read out here, guys. Question number 18 is from hole in one. 
considering the amount of time you dedicate to designing your courses, how do you find a balance between designing and everyday life? What an amazing question. It's tough for sure and may get tougher this fall as I'm expecting our first child. All the best with that Arctic Fury. You will love it. It's absolutely game changing for the better. I wish you and your family all the best with your, your first baby. He says, I am very fast at using the designer though. I like to set aside some time every day for designing. I find designing is very therapeutic for me. I like to think my courses are an escape from the real world for a bit. I'm very glad that people who play my courses feel this way too. The video game industry is changing and I'm glad we still have HP Studios and this golf game with a designer still in it. I like games that focus on immersions and atmosphere instead of addiction. Thank you for all the questions and see you in PGA Tour 2K21. So guys, that is the 18 questions I submitted. But I do have a bonus question here. I did reach out the other day to Adam, aka Arctic Fury. And I asked him, what's your thoughts on PGA Tour 2K21 so far? And he says, I am extremely impressed with the new game. It has exceeded my expectations and the designer looks amazing. Global trees, which will give me the freedom I wanted for years. I have have four official courses in the game. They are my old TGC1 courses and kind of look silly compared to my new stuff. But I'd say they had to do that to make it run well on the Switch, etc. My new stuff may have melted the Switch. Can't wait to watch your videos. I hope you like Umbria. So guys, there we go. Absolute fantastic. Fantastic to get this man's insight and what a course Umbria Golf Club is. I really hope you enjoyed this video guys, it took a lot of time to do. So if you did enjoy the video, please give it a massive like, give it a share and if you are new to the channel, give it a subscribe. But until the next video guys, please take care, peace out and love you all. Bye.